Hey everybody, the Bong is here, ready to give you a brand new Let's Play! Mighty Morphin Power Rangers the Movie for the Sega Game Gear, and this is brought to you by GameAnyone.com. If you played the Power Rangers Game Gear game, this one's going to be very familiar to you. Long ago and far away, a legendary interdimensional being known as Zordon came to the city of Angel Grove to establish a vanguard in the never-ending struggle against evil. With the aid of his trusted assistant, Alpha-5, the Noble Master sought out six extraordinary teenagers and gave them the power to transform into a superhuman fighting force. In times of great need, the young heroes can now call upon colossal assault vehicles known as powerful Zords, or Power Zords. While the identity of the six remained a guarded secret, their courageous exploits soon became the stuff of legends, earning them the title. The Power Rangers, I guess. So yeah, if you play the original Power Rangers game for the Game Gear, the exact gameplay style is similar to, well, this game. Only difference is, of course, the story. Now here's a little something you should know. Up, down, left, right, up, up, down, down. Well, it's not really something you have to know, but this gives you the extra option. If you do that, your versus mode go from normal to dream. I don't really understand what dream is, but I guess versus mode is probably multiplayer or just nothing related to the story. And if you go to size, it can actually make your characters normal size or very large. And you can pretty much go to any stage you want from stage one all the way to stage six. So that's something pretty cool. Uh, let's see, match point, I believe is pretty much just for versus mode. Difficulty, I'll just keep on normal. And, you know, it sounds a bit low, so why don't I turn the volume on this up? Just a little smidgen. So it can sound a little bit better. Capture the Power Rangers and bring them to my dimension of doom! I don't really do a good Lord Zed voice, but I'm trying here. So now we got stage one, Beamcaster. And you can choose between any of the six teenagers you want to fight them. I like to go as Tommy because, well, he's awesome. And how this goes, it's basically like a fighting-esque game. But you don't just fight like one character, you fight like the boss and then probably some putties as well. So yeah, just like your standard like quarter circle, forward, and uh, one or two, and you can do one of your special moves. Try to use your special moves as much as possible to make things a little bit easier on yourself. And whenever you get like that flashing lightning bolt over there, that's when you can use your super. Now I don't know the exact combinations, but I usually try to button mash as much as I can. But you have to get your super move done, otherwise it's just not going to flash anymore and you have to rebuild it. Of course, by defeating your targets, you get a little bit of health. Usually you get a small bit of health if you're facing a weak enemy, such as these putties. But later on, these putties or other enemies could get stronger and you'll get more health as a result. So try your best to avoid damage yourself. Hold away to block. And just make sure you're not, like, uh, blocking a bit too late. Which can sometimes happen. I believe 1 and 2 close to get... 1 and 2 while you're walking towards an enemy is a throw. I could be wrong. Just remember that most of the damage you'll be taking is from an enemy's throw. Because remember, most of the time you're going to be pretty close. And vulnerable to being thrown. I really like uh, Tommy's uh, bicycle kick-esque move. Wait, did he get hit by his own dynamite? Idiot. Don't you know how explosives work? A <laughs> nice throw there, Tommy. So nonchalant, I'll just pick up with one-handed alley-oop ya. That's what I like about Tommy, he's so badass. I will finish those pesky Power Rangers off! Grow, grow, grow! Alright, so now let's get the Megazord put together. Well, of course it's not the regular Megazord, I believe it's Tiger Megazord. Go. Now, of course, this is pretty much just the same thing, like you had to be in your Zord to take on the boss, just in a much larger size, and you have like a different moveset compared to your Ranger. Remember, the Zord has its own moveset. 
And if you die, you have to, like, uh, start the level over, but thankfully, at this point, you don't have unlimited continues like you did in the original Power Rangers Game Gear game. You have, like, I believe, six credits. Well, luckily, thanks to Extra Mode, I won't have to worry about starting the game over, because I can just pick off where I left off. If I were to, like, lose all my continues at that point. Okay, I don't really like using the Zord because his moveset's a bit slower and bulkier. But at least I get a nice bit of range with my sword. And <laughs> I got him in midair! You probably won't see the most refined fighting out of me, but I'll get the job done. Stage clear! Unfortunately, Lord Zed says the exact same thing as he did in the previous level. And right now, stage two is Goldar. A very popular villain in the Power Rangers series that's got reduced to, like, a joke character after a while. But then again, so did Lord Zed, I believe. He used to be, like, more horrifying and apparently concerned mothers, or concerned parents in general, probably mostly mothers, took offense to that, and that was very annoying. Sometimes kids need to be scared to toughen up for the real world. Personally, I think helicopter mothers are much worse than Lord Zed back when he was so horrifying. Jeez. Cut the umbilical cord. Now this is where the plays get a little bit trickier, because now they like to, like, teleport in and out. Which is pretty much a wizard's intercourse, but in any case, just keep doing as much damage as you can, and whoa. They just creep up on you like that. Damn it. The thing I hate about the putties are so fast, and they block so much. You just better hope to pick your spot. Because if you don't, then, well, you're not going to be doing any damage. And just be taking more damage as a result. But, as long as you keep up with the fundamentals, you'll be alright. I've taken a nice bit of damage so far at this point in the level. And I better have, like, a plenty of health for Goldar, because he can be a bit tougher than the putties. Though Goldar is a bit more of a troll like he was in the other game, because he likes to teleport in and out quite a lot. Like, he'll show up to attack you, and then he'll disappear and let the putties do the work, then the putty will show up to do a cheap shot, and then Goldar comes back. This'll happen quite a bit. Like now, for instance. Oh my god. This is gonna keep happening until Goldar gets hit. Sadly, he's oh, difficult to hit at times. Because he just flies in with his sword out. Okay, I cut him off. Beautiful. So now I can pretty much just go for the offense. Remember, this guy has quite a big sword. He'd be very dangerous. Mine's not that large. Oh, man, that was a sword uppercut. That does a nice chunk of damage. Just gotta, like, keep him down. Otherwise, I stand no chance. But then again, it's like that with every fighting game. As long as you keep him down, you don't have to worry about getting hurt yourself. Sliding kick seems to work just fine on him, though. Provided it actually connects. Just make sure you pick your marks. Don't go blindly attacking, otherwise you're just gonna get hit a lot. Oh, doing a nice bit of damage there with that move. Oh god. Oh god, I couldn't get away in time. Nice! Oh, it's gonna come down to the war! Yeah! Oh, that was close. Man, I thought I was done for. Okay, now we gotta do this battle again as the Tiger Megazord. It's sword on sword now. Ah, uh, give me that missile drop kick I tried to block. That's probably one thing that I've used to, like, fail a lot at this game in the past, because I just had the mind not to block and just go all offense. Needless to say, that does not work out. Neither just trying to do a jump attack on Goldar, because he likes to counter with an upper sword attack. 
Looks like doing that dash combo with my sword works just fine. Because it does a nice bit of damage if it connects. That was beautiful. Just too bad he blocked it. Okay, I can get my super... No, I can't. Keep it up. I pretty much got him in the corner now. Oh, he's trying to get away. Can't have that. I <laughs> just got shift him right in the calf or the thigh. And that seems to work just fine against him. And he escapes. He'll come back in other levels, unfortunately. The Jaws of Destruction, so we're almost at the halfway point of the game. Once we beat this level, we completed the first half. Now, when I was practicing this game a few days ago, this level did give me a bit of trouble. Probably just from taking too much damage from the putties and then dealing with the boss here. Because Jaws of Destruction can be a bit tough. But then again, any opposition in this game can be tough. Provided you don't pick your right smarks. Nice. Pretty much just doing a whole bunch of sloppy fighting, like just trying to hit each other's blocks or missing. Most of this just playing like Sword Calibur, you just mash buttons all the time. And more often than not, it works. Of course, trying to understand each Power Ranger's moveset is going to be vital to your success as well. But most of the time, you're just going to be button mashing. I'm sorry, that's just the way it is. Like, I really like this Liu Kang-esque bicycle kick. Oh, Goldar, we meet again! Aw, oh, I try to hit you with my uh, Hadouken ripoff. But I still have that super because Goldar blocked it. If he didn't block it, I would have done a nice bit of damage, but then my move would be gone until I recharge it. Oh, <laughs> nice throw. And now Goldar runs off. But that's good, because now we get to deal with Jaws of Destruction. Get a nice bit of health back just by dispatching Goldar temporarily. I'm going to need all that health to deal with this guy. Because he can be the ultimate pain in the ass. Because pretty much every one of his body parts has blades. Like his leg is pretty much a corkscrew. Or, no way, not corks, or a drill. He has, like, saws for arms, and I think he has a sword on top of his head. He's just like a living blade, or a Swiss army knife. But I got, got him dispatched, so now we gotta do this as the Tiger Megazord. Much further than where I went in practice. So that's not the furthest I went overall. Like, I've made it to the final boss of the game before, but I don't think I've beaten him. But we're definitely gonna try. I'm not one for rage quitting unless it's a very impossible Kaizo-esque hack. Or if I get too bored of playing the same style of game over and over again, like that Yoshi's Island hack from years ago. Oh my god, is that chainsaw? I wouldn't mind having a Swiss Army knife that actually had a chainsaw. That would be very noisy, though. I don't want to put fuel in my Swiss Army knife. But I had a feeling I'd have to. Unless my chainsaw was almost pneumatic, and I don't think that's gonna happen. Ugh. Okay, that was nice. Heh. <laughs> <laughs> just stab him right in the drill. Did you just throw something at me? Not cool. Come on, you're a living blade. Use your body more. Just keep stabbing him in the crotch, and that's how you win. Beautiful. 6,000 years ago, a morphological being known as Ivan Ooze ruled the world with a reign of unparalleled terror. 
He rid entire planets of their adult populations, then brainwashed the young to follow in his evil path. A faction of young warriors known as the Order of Melodon lured him into a hyperlock chamber and buried him deep underground. Present day, Angel Grove. An inner city construction crew accidentally uncovers the hyperlock chamber and releases the evil power of Ivan Ooze. I'm guessing the first half of the game is not really off the movie at all, but rather just standard Mighty Morphin Power Rangers episodes. Maybe loosely connected. Okay, stage four. We might as well just do this stage right now. No reason not to. But now instead of putties, we gotta deal with Oozman, and they're significantly tougher than putties. Remember, at the movie, Lord Zed and Rita Repulsa were no longer a factor because they were kidnapped by Avenues. I think they were trapped in like some kind of snow globe? If I remember the movie. And that was a very fun movie to watch when I was a kid. Yeah! Oh well, yeah, it had a stun effect. I forgot about that, because usually whenever I hit people with that fireball, it just destroys them. Well, it was mostly putties rather than tough bosses or oozemen. But I'll have to take advantage of that because it'll give me a free combo. And at least these guys suck in martial arts. I'm having such an easy time against them compared to putties. Even though they have a bit more health, they can probably do a little bit more damage or pretty much the same kind of damage. I'm having an easier time against them than putties. Because these guys move, while stronger, can move a bit slower. Just remember, there is quite a bit of them. So you'll be here for a while. But it doesn't look like there's any boss, just rather the Oozman, and that's it. So once you take out quite a bit of Oozman, I guess I should be done. Right, not even going to be a Zord level either. Looks like they're really starting to pick up the pace. Beautiful. You kick him right in the legs, you know. And then in the face. I don't really like that arrogant throw used on me, though. It's better when I do it, because I'm Tommy. Hey, stop that stupid Jim Snooko splash. Oh, we're done. Oh, there's more. So I got even more Oozman to take care of. So I guess this makes up for not having a Zor level, but rather two straight Ranger parts for a stage. I can live with that, at least if I die, I'll just continue from here. Damn it. I hate when they try to channel their inner Superfly being using that splash attack. I guess I'll have to channel my inner Liu Kang then. Well, this one has a nice bit of health. Like, almost half a health bar. Damn it. They're trying to use their own mass against me, and I don't like that. Oh my god, this is just comical. We're just making, like, back and forth, missing each other. Like going match for match and failing in the process. Man, this guy's quite durable! Just go! Okay, that's much better. Man, you get a lot of health for that. But remember, the tougher your opponent that you defeat, the more health you get back in return for winning. Damn it. Man, their moves are so painful! Well, not the dropkick, of course, that's just a standard strike. Ah, oh, he blocked it. Keep it. Up! Damn it! Just got an upper chop. Ugh, man, this this is gonna be a, pr a pretty frustrating stage if you gotta be dealing with a lot of oozmen. 
and there's they got a lot of a lot of health. And if depending on how well you do, you could actually be getting much less than what you really came in with for the previous fight. So you gotta take out each Oozman as fast as possible in order to increase your chances against the next one. Okay, it's looking a bit better for me right now. Man, they are getting tougher. Not just because of their health, but because they're fighting smarter. At least that's what I'm noticing. But I think it has a lot to do with them staying around longer. Like, the reason I had an easier time at first is because they had less health, and therefore were wiped out faster. I never had enough time to give me some of their best skills. I have an ooze! Well, I guess I was supposed to lose that. Oh, this is the part where he wrecks Zoran. Oh, that's awful. Having been released from the chamber, Ivan wastes no time and starts attacking the command center, damaging Zordon and Alpha-5, and he's looking for a hug. Alpha tells them that of a power that will save Zordon, and sends the rangers to the planet Fiedos, or Fados. Meanwhile, Ivan has brainwashed and used the adults of Angel Grove to dig up his morphological monsters. After landing on the planet, the Power Rangers run into Dolcea, the Master Warrior. She gives the Rangers the animal powers of the Ninjeti to help them survive on Phaedos. Having faced many difficulties that we can see in this game, the Rangers finally find the Temple of Great Power. With their new power, the Rangers blast back to the Earth. One at a time, of course. They land in Angel Grove as Ivan's Ectomorphicons are destroying the city. And that's never a good thing at all. Yeah, and there's one of them right now. Stage 5, Hornetron. Alright, I think I'm going to stop the video right here, and in the next episode, we're going to be taking on Hornetron. Goodbye, everyone. Thanks for watching. But first, let's watch this come into action. Now, with our new powers, we got ourselves a new Zord! The Ninja Mega Falcon Zord! And in the next part, we'll finally face Horn Hornetron. Goodbye.